did money to the lady at the fucking pharmacy where you bought your cold pills. <laughs> and who knows who she gave it to after that. That's how disease travels. I don't know how long it stays in the fabric and shit. Don't know. They say not long, but I tell you what, I'm not trusting my life. I would trust my life today. Yeah. You know, that's... I, I don't believe... For one thing, I know they're not going to tell us the truth. They're going to keep us pacified with it's not that bad, relax, everybody be calm, as long as they could possibly get away with it, because they have to. Because if they panic the population, they lose control immediately, and then it's all over. So for as long as they can, even if it's getting bad and worse, they're going to try to hide it. And they're gonna to try to pacify you and telling you that, oh, it's not that bad. You know, we, we have ways of dealing with this. We can take care of it. It's only Ebola. Yeah, well, when you first discovered Ebola, oh my God, it's fucking Ebola. Yeah, you yeah, don't yeah. want that's the worst goddamn shit imaginable. Yeah. But now that it's here, it's a different story. Oh, well, you know, you have to actually be in contact. It's only spread by body fluid. Yeah, okay. So, you know, the Black Death used to be spread by fucking fleas until it became airborne, until it mutated. Then it came pneumonic plague. And guess what? Whole different ball game. Now we have half the fucking world dead. Because all the rats are running around with it. But once, it. once it became airborne, it didn't matter about the rats. People gave it to each other. And it wasn't the rats that were infected, it was the goddamn fleas. They eventually killed the rats too, but once it's airborne, that's it. You don't need a carrier anymore. It's just floating out there, a sneeze, and it's everywhere. I mean, this was the great nightmare. In the 90s, when they first discovered this shit, you know, all the horror movies come out about, you know, what would happen if, like, outbreak, right? outbreak? Mm -hmm. we're in deep fucking shit, really deep fucking shit, you know, Dustin Hoffman there. Well, guess what? This is the scenario now. It's here. I'm sure there's people in the CDC and in uh, Fort Detrick and other places shitting their fucking pants right now thinking, you know, please, God, let this end now. Mm -hmm. You know, let's get lucky. Come on, just one more time. Let's get lucky. And nobody else comes up with an infection and nobody else brings it into the country. Everybody that's sick they want to save their own Everybody asses. says, well, we're a first world country and, you know, we can, our medical system, without it. yeah, you know what? What if it gets into the underworld population? Okay, what if it ends up in a slum somewhere or amongst homeless people who tend not to seek medical care, you know, who hide when they're sick or amongst illegal aliens who are not going to fucking bring it to the attention of anybody in authority what do you do then so far it's been amongst professional type people who have sought proper care and everything else these festering rotting bodies <laughs> yeah but what if it gets into the slums into the inner cities and starts to breed there where people live one on top of the other next to each other everything else and it'll spread like a fucking brush fire yeah, they don't, say, they don't say much about that. <coughs> we just really got lucky that this guy, Duncan, whoever he was, was not, you know, some really, really from the lowest classes. Obviously, he wouldn't be, or he wouldn't have had money to fly here in the first place. You know, he must have had some education and been of higher stature in his country. What if he was, you know, an undocumented alien sneaking over the border who picked it up from God knows where in some shithole down there? Then you've got a whole nother problem. Totally puts uh, ISIS in the uh, back of the news. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, that's another fear too, terrorism. You know, these people who strap bombs to their bodies and deliberately blow themselves up on buses and shit, what if they deliberately expose themselves to Ebola? And when they're starting to show symptoms, they sneak over the fucking Mexican border or wherever they get in and just, you know, st stroll amongst the population everywhere. Going to fast food joints, malls, stadiums, <coughs> spreading it as they go, mm. being deliberately messy, putting their own diarrhea on their hands and touching everything, you know, just to get people sick. I would not put that past them at all. That, they said the disease is a poor man's weapon. It's the poor man's nuclear bomb. We did it to the American Indians. Mm. You know? <coughs> did it to the Europeans, too. That was an old trick. <coughs> Montezuma? No. A uh, smallpox. 
mm. taking people who died of it and in their blankets and everything else are just launching the bodies right into enemy fortresses to make the enemy sick. You know, if you are. If it's in your camp, now it's in his camp too. And with the American Indians, we gave them blankets infected with smallpox. Hmm. Yeah, we'll trade you these nice blankets for your deer skins over there. Yeah, look how pretty <laughs> they are. And the famous assassination plot against Abraham Lincoln, where they took uh, clothing of people who died of yellow fever. And they were going to spread it amongst, you know, the White House staff, everything else. Infected shirts and blankets and all kinds of shit. They had this elaborate plan to get into the White House. It didn't work. It didn't go anywhere. They didn't understand the nature of disease and the blankets and shit. They weren't infected anyway. They thought it was like smallpox where somebody's old clothes and blankets could get you sick. It doesn't work that way with yellow fever. They didn't understand the differences between diseases at that time. But they did try it. Oh, look at this. Hello. Well, he's not even budging. Doesn't give a shit. He knows you're going to stop. You don't want to keep horns on him? Yeah. remains viable outside of a body or how long it would remain viable in a corpse you know they're, they're still worried about digging up plague graves from you know yeah. 1600s or whatever over in Europe and shit because they're afraid of what's there it could still be dormant but viable it could come back Tonight. Yeah, well, we're a little early. It's only 1.26 in the morning. Hmm. Well, not as late. Last time we were out after 2. So I don't think the bars have closed quite yet. Lit up. What's the latest? Three weeks. Oh, a deadline. Yeah, well, it keeps changing because uh, two weeks ago he said it's going to be the end of October. Well, now he's saying, no, it's going to be three weeks. It's going to be sometime in November. <laughs> so it keeps moving. Sure Again. Right. Well, I'd expected that, but you know. Probably be after Thanksgiving. I don't know. Possibly. We're right on it. I'm coming over for a sandwich when you call me. <laughs> the word it's open you give me a ring I'll come right down oh, we'll know in advance that there'll be big banners and shit out I'm sure and I'm sure Scott will yell out we're opening tomorrow or some shit like that <laughs> all right Scott okay let me know about Virginia yep oh. yeah let's put an end to that <laughs>